Hello my YouTube friends, today's video is sponsored by Streamtunes, but I'll tell you about that more later. A lot of game streamers use multiple PC setups. There's a good reason for this and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but it's an expensive deal to have two machines and multiple monitors and all that kind of stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to do a two machine setup and save on the expense of a capture card, because you don't need one. So let's get to it! Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. It's totally free and it really does help me to continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. A two PC setup for game streams solves a lot of problems. If the game crashes the PC, the stream still stays up and running. And you can run the highest game settings without fear of getting any lag in your stream's video or audio audio from encoding on the same system. And your streaming machine doesn't need to be anything special. You could probably get away with an older i3, 16 gigs of RAM, and an old Nvidia graphics card to do the encoding. You do want to have both machines connected to Ethernet on the same router, but you shouldn't be streaming on Wi-Fi anyway if you're serious about streaming. Now we need to install NDI to send signal from one machine to another. There are two pieces to this install, so just keep that in mind. We're going to start out on the new tech NDI page. Of course, the links for these are in the description and they're totally free. All you have to do is scroll all the way to the bottom and we are going to click on the NDI tools for Windows. There is also an NDI tools for Mac. The process is basically the same if you know how to install things on your Mac. We're going to click download, fill out the form, click I am not a robot and submit. Then it sends an email to your inbox and there's a link in that email so that you can download the actual install. Next, we're gonna jump over here into this page and we're going to download the OBS integration and we're gonna click go to download. We're gonna scroll down here and there is a Mac and Windows version. So download the appropriate one for your machine. We're gonna click on the Windows one, save the file. Now we have everything we need. So we're gonna go ahead and run our NDI tools first and it's just clicking accept and nexting through all of the stuff. It's pretty easy to install these. You just click next and finish. And it launches this NDI launcher. You can just close out of that. We have one more to do. We're going to click on the OBS NDI 4.9 and we're gonna go ahead and click OK. Make sure both of these boxes are selected and click Next and then Install. And then it'll run through the install for both of these little packages. And once it's finished, you just click Finish and we're all set except for make sure that you reboot your machine before we jump into the next step. Keep in mind that you need to do this install on both PCs, the gaming PC and the streaming PC. Every live stream or video needs some sort of good music Music, right? But how do you find good music for free that's not going to get you strikes to your live streams or your video? Today's sponsor, Streamtunes, is the answer. Now, Streamtunes is a 100% free platform of high quality DMCA safe music. And it's always free. No strings attached, no bogus signups, nothing. Just free. Not only that, but Streamtunes is available on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and most, if not all, streaming services, including YouTube Music. Music. And they have a library of more than 800 songs and it's growing by the day. Another really cool part about Streamtunes is that every time you play their songs on any of the services, a donation is made to Music Counts. And this charity helps to keep music programs going in high schools all over Canada. And that's just awesome. Be sure to check out Streamtunes for yourself. There is a link in the description. And like I said, it's totally 100% free. Now back to setting this up in OBS. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new profile up here. We're gonna call this one Multi. And then I'm going to create a new scene collection. I'm gonna call that Multi as well. And then I'm gonna go into the settings and we'll go to Output and we'll drop this down to Advanced. And I'm gonna select the best encoder that I have on the machine. In this case, it's the NVIDIA NVIC encoder. You may be working with X264, although this is your gaming PC. I'm pretty sure you have an NVIDIA card if that's what you're going to be doing. 
So select the best encoder that you have. You wanna set up your bit rate here. In this case, 6,000 kilobits per second will give you an HD 60 frames per second stream. We wanna do max quality and high. We wanna do look ahead and that all looks good. We can go into audio and adjust our sample rate if we choose. We can also select our monitoring device. And this is something we would choose if we wanna to listen to our game audio through a headset or something like that that's going to be plugged into the gaming machine. So if you do wanna do that, you wanna select your monitoring device. Then we're gonna go into video and we're going to set this up for the actual resolution we're going to be streaming at. In my case, 1920 by 1080. And you wanna make sure that they're both set exactly the same. And then we wanna set our frames per second we're gonna be streaming at, in this case, 60 frames per second. And once we're finished with that, we are good to go. We can click apply and then okay. Now we're gonna populate our scene. So I'm gonna click the plus and we're going to go ahead and we're gonna add our game capture. And we can click okay and Really, you don't have to change anything in here. It's going to grab the full screen when it comes up. So you just click OK. And the last thing we need to do is go and select Tools and then go to our NDI Output Settings and click Main Output and make sure you look at what it's actually named. And once we bring the game up, it's captured. We just need to add some audio. So I'm gonna go up to my Application Audio Output. This is a plugin that some of you may have if you watched my Application Audio Output video or my win audio video. If you have not, there is a link at the top of the page so you could check it out. This allows you to select the specific game audio that you want or any other audio. And we just do that based on the window. I can drop this down and select the game. In this case, it's Lost Ark. Click OK. Now we're capturing the game audio. If you are on a Mac or you are not using the win audio plugin, you can just click the plus. You go to audio output capture and we'll just call this one game so it doesn't get mixed up with the other one. Click OK. We can drop down device and then select the device that the audio for the game is playing through. In most cases, it should be your headphones since you don't want it feeding back into your microphone. So I'm just gonna select headphones here. And as you can see, we are getting audio from both sources. So that's a way to add your audio from either source if you choose. I only need one of these. I'm gonna remove the desktop audio one. And now we just need to go over into our streaming PC and get this up and running. Now, the first thing I want you to be aware of is the PC that I'm actually streaming from has two square monitors. So I just kind of stretched them out here so that they look somewhat normal. But you're gonna notice that the aspect ratio looks a little weird. And that's just because the monitor sizes are weird. That's not how it would actually show up on stream. It's going to stream with the exact settings that we set. And on this machine, the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and click profile. We're gonna add a new one and this one's gonna be called multi. Then I'm going to go into scene collection and add a new one as well and call it multi. Then we're going to go back down here into the settings and we're just going to set up our streaming profile. The first thing you want to do is go into output. We're going to go to advanced and we're going to set it up with the proper encoder. Once again, hopefully you have an NVIC encoder on here You're using an NVIDIA card, but if you're using X264, that's fine. The settings are generally exactly the same. We're going to set our bit rate at 6,000 kilobits per second, and we're going to put it at max quality and look ahead and all that sort of stuff. The settings are a little bit different if you're using X264, but I do assume that if you're going to be streaming games with multiple PCs, both your machines have NVIDIA cards. Now we can go up here into stream, we can set up our live stream to whatever platform we want, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, wherever. We can go into audio and set this up. And if we wanna monitor the audio output from the streaming PC, here's where we would set up our monitoring device. And this is all a matter of where you wanna monitor your stream from. Now we're going to go into video and we're gonna drop this down and select the size of our stream. And I'm going to set both of these exactly the same, 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to set my frame per second to 60 frames per second. And that's all we need to do. We can click apply and okay. And I'm just gonna resize the screen here. There we go. Then I'm gonna go and click the plus under sources and add an NDI source. I'm gonna name the source game, click okay. And all I need to do is drop this down and select the name of the source. In this case, it's coming from my PC named editor and the name of the source is OBS. You don't really need to change anything here, but you can under sync, it has source timing. 
or it has network timing. You probably want it on source timing so you make sure that you get the proper number of frames per second and all that sort of stuff. You can select to allow for hardware acceleration and fix alpha blending if you like. There really isn't any other settings that I play with too much on here. All you have to do is click OK and it's going to bring up that NDI source. Now again, this is stretched out on a wonky sized monitor and that's why it looks kind of weird, but I can promise you on the live stream, this would look absolutely perfect. And that's all we need to do. You can see our audio is coming across. Everything is ready to go. So we can just click stream if we want. Now I recommend that you run the entire stream and that means all the scenes and the cameras and everything except for your game on the streaming PC. And that just makes sense because the purpose of doing this is so the game PC can run at its max resolution and speed and frames per second and everything else so you get awesome image and awesome quality without it having to worry about doing the actual streaming duties as well. All it does is ship it out on the network, it gets picked up by another machine, and you can add all the effects and cameras and scenes and everything else to that other machine, and it doesn't affect the gameplay at all. But of course, this is something that you have to decide for yourself and do your own testing. It's really just that easy to set up your live stream on multiple PCs without a capture card. It's pretty awesome. If you want to see how this works with a capture card, you can check this video out right here. Big thanks to the channel sponsors. There are links below in the description so you can check them out. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.